This episode of the Power Ranking Show is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all of your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for football, basketball, baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and the easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games that are available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use promo code BELIEVE for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Hey, and it's the Power Rankings Podcast, aka the Power Rankings Show. That, of course, is the voice of at Marcus underscore Mosher. Of course, we're on Brinks TV and uh, the Believe Network and uh, sponsored by the good folks over there at Bet Online. And uh, we're going to be talking about some Bet Online lines, their actual product. It's kind of cool when you're sponsored by a product that you can actually like kind of use. I mean, isn't well, I don't I don't want to ask you if you use some of the sponsors you have on Locked On Cowboys. Uh yeah, share, big, fan, big fan of DoorDash uh in eBay okay. Motors. Yeah, shout out to those guys. Uh what's the other one you uh, have as a sponsor? Yeah, we're not big talking League about Chew. that. Big uh, League Chew. Wait, no, it's not Big League Chew. It's uh, uh, anyway, we'll yeah. <laughs> Listen, we, we got picks to do. Uh, last week was an interesting week. I'm sure a lot of you out there struggled with picks because there were some games that were upsets and it was tough. You know, I don't think a lot of people thought the 49ers were going to struggle like that against the Browns. I don't think a lot of people thought the Eagles were going to lose to the Jets. Um, you know, it was it was tough. So um, I think everyone thought the Panthers were going to get throttled by the Dolphins. And even for one quarter, you're wondering about that. So uh, I don't you imagine a lot of people took it on the uh, keister last week? Yeah, I thought this was just a way for you to humble brag and say nobody else expected these picks except for me on the power ranking uh, show because you did accurately predict the 49ers or sorry, the Browns to keep that game competitive and you picked the Jets to win outright. Well, uh, I got a lot of mo, I got a lot of mo. <laughs> so hey, let's get to the first game, bro. We got the Saints. What's going yeah. on? We got the Jacksonville Jaguars at the New Orleans Saints. Uh, when I posted this line or sent it to, to Courtney this morning, it was Saints minus three. It has since moved to Saints minus one. And I think that has to do with the fact that Trevor Lawrence practiced today and is expected to at least try to play on Thursday. Yeah, I'm going to take the Jags in an upset. Or Well, not really an upset. It's one point. <laughs> Can we call it an upset? <laughs> but believe me, that works well. Uh <laughs> But I, I want a little recent history here. When I see this matchup, which we only see every four years, uh, when the NFC South and AFC South play each other, although sometimes the Jags might uh, happen to play the Saints, you do have one swing game. Uh, reminds me of 2003, I think. They played at Jacksonville. The Saints went had a crazy play where they had to keep tossing the ball around. Do you remember I know that, this? I, I remember because I remember what happens after that play. And I yes. think it was John Carney. It was I number three. The kicker. Yeah. So the, the, the Saints are down with guys with like 17, 18 seconds left. Okay. Uh, so they do one of those crazy lateral plays. And it's the first one that I ever saw work, you know, where everyone laterals the ball. They score the touchdown. All they got to do is kick the extra point to tie it. And <laughs> John Carney misses missed it. it. Not even close. Yes. It wasn't even all that close no. on the extra point. So um, yeah. I'm going the Saints here. Um, short week. I, I just wonder how healthy Trevor Lawrence is. He ha- he's been wearing this massive leg brace. Um, I'm going to take the Saints to win and cover here. Yeah, it's this is a tough one, no doubt. And uh, I have to really think about it. Last week, I did want to change my – you spooked me on Falcons. Commanders, you wouldn't let me change. And, of course, the Commanders won like you called it. So, there you go. Let's go to the Bears. Oh, wait, do we really want to go to the Bears? We <laughs> I was going to say, do we? Yeah. yeah, so we've All got right. the Let's Las go Vegas the Ra- Raiders at the Chicago Bears. No Justin Fields this week uh, with yeah. a dislocated thumb. Probably no Jimmy Garoppolo dealing with a back injury. So, that's – I think it's going to be Brian Hoyer versus Tyson Bagnett. Uh Raiders minus three in this game on the road. Do you trust Brian Hoyer or are you taking the Raiders here? I mean, do I trust Brian Hoyer in a road start? No, I don't at all, but I'm probably taking the Raiders. Just both these teams are not very good, but it part of me just, I can't believe that the Raiders would be four and three after seven games. I'm going to switch. I'm going to take Chicago plus the points. Hmm. 
Mm. No, I'm going with the Raiders. I'm going to trust these guys on the. Well, I don't trust the Raiders. What am I saying here? This is such a walk away. Courtney, do we have a walk away, stay away graphic that we could? I don't. Yeah, yeah I mean, this is horrific. stay away from betting on it. Stay away from watching it. Stay away from. What's the watching total these on teams? this game? What's What's the total? It's got to be low. <laughs> you want to guess? I mean, it's got to be 42 at the most. Oh, at the you, most, to wait to 37. Yeah, I was going to say. But see, Vegas never goes that low. Gosh. The Raiders haven't scored take... more than 19 points in a single game this year on offense. I know, but the this, the scare when you're down, when you're getting down to 38, 37 range, the scare is pick sixes and turnovers. That's your scare, uh, especially with uh, paltry quarterback play. Paltry. There's one for you. That's I don't know if that's a Lindy's word, but there we is go. Let's paltry, go. Paltry, like what you have, like food to eat? There, no, paltry. On. Uh, we got the Cleveland Browns at the Indianapolis Colts. Still doesn't seem like Deshaun Watson's going to play, but the Browns are two point road favorites. See, this is the kind of the game, kind of game that the Browns maddeningly lose, and it's and so I'm gonna. Ah, uh, oh gosh, I hate this game. This if, if, great. This is the kind of game the Browns yes, lose, especially after an emotional win. It's just, do you trust the Colts to score like more than 17 points against this defense with Gardner Minshew? No, but I don't trust the Browns to score with PJ Walker. So uh, it's, it's, it's where I'm at. That's why I will take the Colts plus the points because I could see this being a 14 to 13 type of game. Yeah, I'm going to go uh, 20 to 17 Colts. I'm going to give a little, little more love. Let's talk over under on this one also because this has got to be low. 40. Uh, I'd take the under on that. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not afraid of forty. I'm afraid Neither of thirty-seven. I. I'm not afraid of forty. Okay, uh, next guy. Same thing for me. Uh, our next one, man. What an awesome game! The Buffalo Bills at the New England Patriots. The Bills are eight-point road favorites in New England. I would stay away from that line, but I have no problem picking the Bills here. I, I don't like. I wouldn't. I wouldn't bet on this game. I'd, I'd Way to have I'd guts really... taking the bills there. That's just a very bold call by you. Good job. I, I think I've made some bold calls, uh, mister, uh, but I'm not going to do it in this case. And I would rather take, honestly, the Browns Colts under than the bills by eight here. So if you're looking for different things to to bet your five bucks. The total, yeah, the total here is interesting. It's 41. I'm inclined to bet the under because I just, <laughs> New England's offense is so bad. But I could mm-hmm. also see this being the game where Buffalo's offense gets back on track a little bit. They've yes. averaged 32 points per game in their last eight games against New England. I wouldn't be surprised if they score, if it's a 35 to 10 game in the over hits. Right. And the, the other issue when you're, when you have a team that's, that's been uh, kind of uh, middling around and you know, they have the potential to score over 30, what can happen is you have a, you know, 14 to 10 game going to the fourth quarter and then bam, 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 you're up to 35, you know? Yeah. Uh, two um, drives also, and a horrible middling. Patriots quarterback play. Yeah. Middling. That's another Lindy's word. Just mark it down. Uh, our next game, the New York Giants are at home against the Washington Commanders. Commanders, uh, two-point favorites here in the road. With the way these two teams play sometimes, this really is a, you think this game's like you against you? <laughs> Uh, in case you, you haven't picked it up, uh, Elliot and I had about an hour conversation on our favorite Rocky quotes. Uh, that's a pretty good one. Uh, look, don't be dishonest because you lied to me and you lied to mom. Okay, so <laughs> I, I thought we were home team, Elliot. You know what? Uh, I'm taking the Giants here. I'm taking the Giants. Yep. They, I, they played well against Buffalo for the how? most part. Look, how can I, you pick the Giants at any? I will game? tell you how. I tell you how I'll pick them because I saw signs from that offensive line that they played uh, okay last week. Given all the rearranging, uh, they can build off of that. I think. Uh, I think Brian Dable will build off of that. Isn't this game in New York? Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. And uh, this will be Tyrod Taylor's uh, second straight start. Yeah. Give me. Give me the Giants over the Commanders. I'm taking Washington. I, I just like their offense so much more. I think they could score 24 points in this game and win. Yippee. <laughs> this is some great don't games be, so don't far. Be, oh, <laughs> trust me, they don't get better. 
Uh, here we go. Next one. Atlanta Falcons at Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This isn't a bad game. Uh, Bucks two and a half point home favorites. Yeah, I think, you know, both of these teams are looking to rebound from uh, not great performances in Atlanta's case that, you know, there were things that happened in that game where you thought they, they kind of beat themselves. And then with Tampa, uh, their worst outing of the season, the fact that Tampa is at home, I, I'm going to take the home team here. I think Tampa is going to rebound, and I think they're probably extremely embarrassed about the way they played against the Lions. Well, both teams scored six points last week on offense. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, give me Baker also over Desmond Ritter um, here as well. I, I what advantage? What significant strategic advantage does Atlanta have over Tampa Bay or personnel wise? Where you think, oh yeah, Atlanta is going to go in there and beat them. I do think Atlanta's Running? offensive line, yeah, matches up pretty okay. well. Um, so if they can run the ball, I wouldn't be surprised if they have some success. But I'm I'm leaning with you. I'm going to take Tampa here. Okay. All right. Next one. Uh, actually, this is a really good early game. The Detroit Lions at the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens Ugh. three point home favorites, and I am taking the Lions to win outright. It's my lock of the week. I hate this game. I hate it. Well, you're going to be rooting for the Lions so hard. Well, how did you know? <laughs> you hate the That's Ravens minute. more than I hate the Steelers. <laughs> uh, you know, I, the I, the thing is, is similar to the Browns Colts game. This is the kind of game that the Lions go in and Jared Goff lays an egg. But I look at it the opposite is, way because yeah, the, the Ravens have not played any good quarterbacks this year outside of CJ Stroud in Week One at home in his first start. Um, they played Kenny Pickett and Ryan Tannehill and Malik Willis and Gardner Minshew. And they've lost some of those games that they shouldn't have lost. I, I think Goff, especially with the Ravens coming back from a game in London. Sure. Uh, I think I think the Lions are going to win this game. There's a couple things that concern me. Uh, and we're spending a little longer on this game because, I mean, look at the other games we had to talk about, guys. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, no David Montgomery bothers me, uh, quite frankly, in this kind of game. You know, but you look at something. The Lions defense has kind of sn- snuck up on people. Uh, okay. And if you look at the last few weeks, man, the way they played against Tampa, the way they played against Carolina, the way they manhandled Green Bay. Uh, now, I, I get it. Those aren't like uh, those aren't Lamar Jackson. Uh, but I'm going to go with you here and put a little confidence in the Lions where I wasn't willing to do it uh, with the Browns. And part of that is because the Browns are playing a backup quarterback and the Lions are not. The last two games between the Lions and Ravens have both ended with 63 plus yard field goals being made. I remember the Tucker one that from like 66. Yeah, Tucker made the uh, other one from 64 in the other game. Was that before. the one that that donged off the? No, that was a, the, that was a 67 yarder that donged off the, the kind of the middle part of the uh, upright. Yeah, yeah. Yeesh. Good game. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, okay, next right. up. Uh, this is our afternoon game. We've got the Steelers at the Rams. Uh, a couple of notes on the Rams. No Kyron Williams. He's out for the next month to a, to a high ankle injury. Ronnie Rivers, their backup running back, is out in this game. Uh, their starting cornerback, DeAndre Kendrick, was arrested on Monday from a felony gun charge. So the, Ra- the, the Rams are missing several key players. Still three-point favorites at home in a stadium that will probably have, I don't know, 65,000 Pittsburgh fans. Yeah, and I think they win this game. Uh, I think Pittsburgh is not going to be able to dilly-dally like they do and squeeze out some ugly home Mike Tomlin win because they're not at home and they're facing uh, a a pretty good quarterback here that's playing well. Uh, In terms of covering it, this will probably end up being a push in terms of uh, betting. I got to tell you, this kind of game, a little historical note, the, you know, the Rams unis don't look like they used to, but man, when the Rams had their classic unis against the Steelers, it looked awesome. And this Super Bowl, Super Bowl 14, if you've ever seen the films of this, it looks so good. And uh, it's one of the most underrated Super Bowls ever. It was actually much closer than people realize. Um, but I'm with you. I think Pittsburgh fans are just going to infiltrate the stadium. We remember, we remember when they played, it was at Duck Hodges. Yeah, Chargers. Played, uh, against Sunday the Chargers. And it, it didn't even feel like any Charger fans were there. <laughs> it felt like no. a Steelers game. It was, yeah, Sunday night. But I'm, I'm going to go with the Rams. I'm taking the Steelers to win out. I know you, of course uh, you are. And here's the reason. I do not like the Rams' offensive tackles at all. I think they're, they're playing very poorly. 
Alex Highsmith is playing awesome this year for Pittsburgh. TJ Watt has eight sacks. I just think they're going to be able to get pressure on Stafford all game long, and he's not going to have time to sit back there in the pocket and throw the ball to these receivers, who I do think we're going to be open. You know, when you tell me the Steelers are going to win and you say it like that, everything else after what you saying that is just like, wah, 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 wah. Like when Charlie Brown's mom would call. That's fine. That's, 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 that's what little, you st- – If you guys want to make some money like this week, bet on Pittsburgh yeah. Money It's like plus 150. Uh, all right, our next game, Elliot, since you didn't like that one. Arizona Cardinals at Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks are eight point home favorites. I like the game. I just didn't like your pick. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go Seattle here. In terms of covering, I would take the Cardinals. Uh, I think they'll bounce back. Now, a lot of that has to do with Dobbs. Um, and I realize it's a little bit of a risk. So if you don't want to bet your 10 bucks on this game, don't do it. Uh, but I don't like Seattle, but that's too many points for me. And we've seen how tough the Cardinals can play. I mean, the Cardinals quarterback played really bad last week and the, they were in that entire game. The Rams pulled away at the very end. Uh, and that was a road game as well. And the Rams already went and beat Seattle in Seattle. Um, yeah. Give me the Cardinals to cover Seattle to win. Cardinals were very competitive early in the year, but the last three games have not been very good. They've lost by two touchdowns in each of the last three games. I think this is just going to be really hard for Dobbs. So I'm taking Seattle to not only win, but also game. cover. Yeah, it's I know. A division game. Okay. okay. We'll see. You want a poop fecta game? Here we go. Green Bay Packers at Denver Broncos. What a what a game. Packers, one and a half point favorites. What game? What kind of game do you call this? Poop fecta. <laughs> Sweet. Sweet. Uh, oh, man. Which I, which basically means I don't want to watch any of this game, but if it pops up on Red Zone and I see a big play, I'll watch it, and then I'll just go back to watching whatever game I was watching before. Another great uh, Super Bowl, though. Uh, another kind of underrated Super Bowl, frankly. This one doesn't get thrown in with the classics, but it absolutely was. Um, all right. All right. Uh, I... I'm going to go with the Packers, and That's I have no confidence whatsoever. Uh, but uh, I do think Jordan Love is a better player than we've seen uh, the last few weeks. I, I could be wrong on that, but um, there's nothing about the Broncos that inspires me to say, oh, yeah, man, they've really they've really turned the corner. I mean, they're all, offensively, everything looks like a struggle. And when people were saying, yeah, well, Russell Wilson played pretty well at the beginning of the year. That's because you set the bar so low that if he plays kind of mediocre to decent football, it's considered good. When's the last time you saw the Broncos have a stellar offensive value? Yeah, it's been a while. That's, that's why yeah. I'm leading Green Bay's box, well, especially they're coming off was it 13 days rest for this game. I, I think they bounce back. Um, not a good game. Next one. Man. This one is fun. Chargers at Chiefs. Chiefs five and a half point favorites. Now there's some rest disadvantage here. The Chiefs last played on Thursday, so that's 10 days to get ready mm-hmm. for this game. While mm-hmm. the Chargers played on Monday night, now they're traveling to Kansas City. Um, I'm taking the Chiefs here. Yeah. Yeah, you just I could just see it. You know, Justin Herbert's like, I feel like Lumberg's gonna ask me to come in on Sunday. Just feel it. Just <laughs> avoid them all day. Game. Yeah. Uh Boy, these are these are not easy picks this week. Uh, you know, that's a lot of points to me for Kansas City. I know five and a half doesn't sound like a lot, but it is. I I I think the Chargers cover that. Yeah. I'm gonna take the Chiefs just because I trust their defense, which is crazy that I don't trust their offense, but I trust their defense right now. They like hold the Chargers to 20 points, and I think the the Chiefs get to 27. It's just the so. Chargers always play them so tough I know. in Kansas City. I know. That's the problem here, but I'll take Kansas City to win the game outright on a buck or field goal. Okay. Uh, Sunday Night Football, really good game. The Miami Dolphins against the Philadelphia Eagles. This game is in Philadelphia, and the Eagles are one-and-a-half-point favorites. I'm taking the Eagles to win, uh, obviously to cover, too. I mean, that would be really weird if, like, no, but they don't cover. They only win by one point. Uh, I think they uh, they are embarrassed. They have to be. Jalen Hurts, uh, it certainly knows the, the interception he threw – at the end of the game against the Jets, man. Uh, I think he's going to be very well motivated. Um, I think the Dolphins are going to have trouble with him, too. If he uses his legs, they're in trouble. I also worry about Miami's offensive line has not been 
really challenged this year yet. I don't I'm trying to think of a game where they really maybe the Chargers week one. I'd have maybe. to look at their schedule again, but I, I haven't really seen it. I think the Eagles are going to do that. And Tua, when he's pressured, can be prone to inaccuracy. Would you agree with that? He gets in these little valleys. Yeah, and he, sometimes. he's not the biggest quarterback where he can just kind of stand tall and throw when he's getting pressured. Couple notes on Miami's offensive line. Theron Armstead, their Pro Bowl left tackle, he's not playing. That's uh, not good. <laughs> Connor Williams, their center, who actually graded out as the number two overall center by PFF last year, he's not playing in this game either. Liam Eikenberg, currently the lowest graded center on Pro Football Focus, expected to start. I could just see this being a game where the Eagles front absolutely dominates. Yeah, I, this might be my lock of the week. Uh, what, I'm with can you. we talk some total here? Sure. Uh, 52. Oh, that's kind of high. I was hoping it'd be a little lower, and I would tell you to take the over all day. Would you be willing to go over on 52? I think I'm more inclined to take the under, because I think this is going to be like a 27 to 21 type of thing. Uh, well, you're very close to what I was thinking. I would probably lean under, but I think I would just stay away from the total, and I'll take Philadelphia to cover. All okay, right. let's go to the uh, Monday Nighter. San Francisco 49ers at the Minnesota Vikings. It sounds like Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, Trent Williams are all going to play for the 49ers. Meanwhile, the Vikings will be without Justin Jefferson and Marcus Davenport. 49ers getting seven or sorry, giving seven points on the road. I'm fine with that seven points. At worst, it's a push. Um, I think the 49ers are going to play a pretty good football game, but I actually I sense that Kirk Cousins is too. And I think the 49ers secondary can be had at times. You know, P.J. Walker missed throws that were there, Marcus, when he got out of trouble. Now, will Kirk Cousins be able to get out of trouble and and get out of the pocket and, and exploit the Niners without Justin Jefferson? That's, that's, uh, that's a tough one. So I think this game is closed for three quarters. I think the 49ers pull away and they cover that spread in the end. I'm calling this the Fred Warner game. I think this is the game where Fred Warner officially becomes the favorite to win defensive player of the year. I think he's going to have multiple big plays, probably an interception. I'm taking the 49ers to win this game and to cover that spread. All right, let's review our picks. What do we got? We've got some crappy games this week is what we have, <laughs> Elliot. <laughs> uh, all right, we've got... We don't need it. Yeah, we we've got need. Jags at Saints. I like the Saints to win. You like the Jags to win. Raiders, Bears... You have major problems if you're betting on this game. I'm taking the Bears. You're taking the Raiders. Browns, Colts. Uh, we both kind of like the Colts to pull off the upset in this game, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Bills, Raiders. I'm taking the Bills to cover. You're taking the Bills just to win. Really, really bold call by Elliot there. Giants, Commanders. <laughs> I'm taking the Commanders to win and cover. Elliot's taking the Giants. We Falcons, Tampa Bay. We're we're both- just one more. <laughs> Falcons, Bucks, we're both taking the Bucks to win and cover. Ravens, yeah. Lions, I'm taking the Lions to win outright. You're taking the Ravens here, correct? No, I'm taking the Lions. I went oh, with you on this. Good. Have some yeah. faith. Steelers, yes. Rams, uh, you're taking the Rams to win. Yeah. Push on that spread. I'm taking the Steelers to win outright. I will be proven correct on that one. Cardinals, Seahawks, uh, we both like the Seahawks to win. I like them to cover. You do not. We both like Green no. Bay against the Broncos in the worst game of the week. Chargers, Chiefs, I like the Chiefs to win and cover. You like the Chiefs to uh, win, but the Chargers pick. to cover. Uh, <laughs> Dolphins, <laughs> Eagles, we both like the Eagles to win outright and to cover that one and a half point spread. 49ers, Vikings, uh, we both like the 49ers to win. Yeah, I was going to say charity pick, and charity really hurts. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I can't stop. Yeah, I don't think you really believe in that Chiefs Chargers. I, there's always one that I know you don't believe in besides the Steelers. And I know part of you is like, I know this game's going to be. Really oh, I cool. believe in the Steelers. The, the pass rush is just going to eat Matt. Stanley no, I meant no, I meant last time. Any Steelers pick you don't believe in really, but fine, that's eh, fine. I, I that's, I'll, uh, Sean McVay might not be calling plays for this game. He's expecting to have the uh, his daughter at any point. Ah, cookies and cream. Well, that that's uh, oh. Uh, Golly, oh, that game is hard to pick, man, isn't yeah. it? What was the line again on uh, Steelers Rams? Rams minus three. But McVeigh's not going to call plays. Well, we don't know yet. He, th- there was this uh, report that last week they were expecting the baby to come on Sunday, and that if the baby came, he wasn't going to be there. Still, no word yet on whether they've had the baby yet or not. So, 
this is really in-depth football analysis when we're talking about <laughs> yeah. uh, delivery dates and all that kind of stuff. What does he wear to delivery? Does he wear? I think he's. It's a hoodie, right? It's a it's a blue <laughs> yeah. hoodie with black yeah. joggers and like white white shoes. <laughs> I think you're right, but you he think... can. But but he's like stripped down for him, you know. Do you think uh, he's got like a, a, a play sheet over his mouth, talking like you know, talking to the doctor? <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's the, what's the game plan here? <laughs> uh, we going with Lamont's breathing. Uh, yeah. All right. Sounds good. Uh, yeah, man. I think uh, so. Your lock of the week was Lions. Was that right? Uh, and Steelers. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I think mine is Eagles uh, over Dolphins. And uh, there were some unders I liked, but uh, I, I really like the Eagles this week. Uh, I'm telling you, though, I'm telling you, this 49ers Vikings intrigues me to take that. I because I, I could see the 49ers really pulling away. It's just seven just points running all over. Seven points. I could see that. Is I can see this being like a 35 to 14 game. Ooh, that much of a blowout. Okay. Yeah. Uh, interesting. All right. But as always, sir, your final thought. Why is the NFL? We Last <laughs> no. week, we had two teams on by. This week, we've got six games. And we've got five games in the afternoon slot, the late afternoon slot. And then we've only got like five games in the early slot. Like, what? What the heck, NFL? What are we doing here? Let's balance these games out a little bit better. Why don't you just say your standard line for Thursday night football that you always say? <laughs> this game's not bad. I, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll li- at least watch this game. No, you say football's so dumb. I might be saying that if Derek Carr wins this game, but all right. So look, uh, we, we wish that we could, you know, really bump this up and say, "Man, what a great week of games!" Look, it's just not, and that's just the way the the schedule is this week. But there are some. Good games that you can circle on the schedule. I agree with Marcus. Lions Ravens is a good game. I think Steelers Rams can be a fun game, and obviously the big one is Miami and Philadelphia. I guess Chargers Chiefs too. There, look, there's you, there's a four pack. Do you want my prediction for the uh, Steelers Rams game? <laughs> prediction. Pain. <laughs> All right, we're sorry. We really we apologize, uh, but uh, that's our picks for this week. So look. Uh, a lot of caution, a lot of a lot of walkaway games for you guys out there. So if, if you're betting money or you're betting in your family pool, you don't need to you don't need to bet on all these games. But straight up picks, I think you'll be fine. Just be very careful with your five bucks, please, on some of these games, and uh, don't touch the Saints game. Just don't even don't even don't even look at the don't even look at the Raiders Bears game. Don't no, even look. Don't at even, it, don't watch. Okay, it. but if you are gonna listen to something, worst segue ever. Make sure you listen to Locked On Cowboys. I don't know if you guys know this, but Marcus Mosher is the host of the Locked On Cowboys podcast with Landon McCool. He also hosts a dynasty podcast on the Locked On Network. He's on there twice a week. Uh, and he covers the Raiders for USA to Raiders Wire. So don't really watch the excited. game. Just read. Just go to Raiders Wire and read. Just don't watch the game. Yeah. And he writes for 33rd team. He is at Marcus underscore Mosher on Twitter. That's my, at Marcus underscore Mosher on Twitter. And, of course, I am at Harrison NFL on Twitter. And we appreciate you guys. Have a great football weekend. We'll talk to you all later.